Hello, welcome to another great episode of Royal Black and Elite. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. And today's episode is not so much about a person historically, but it's a response to a conversation that's being had more and more around the country regarding Britain, slavery, reparations, who's to blame, and all of it. As people learn more and more about the history of slavery. I'm your lecturer and social historian, Lady Trinette Wilson, and I want to thank everybody for joining me. I want to especially thank you for the likes, the subscribes, and shares. History is interesting, and this channel it is proving it so. Now, I had an opportunity to uh, catch the tape and the soundbite between Don Lemon of CNN and a royal commentator named Hillary Fordwick regarding the subject of reparations and Britain's role in the brutal institution of slavery. Now, because the subject of slavery is so painful and, yes, maddening, we as a society often miss the opportunity to really talk about it. Most knowledge of people's knowledge about slavery, and in particular, the enslavement of over 12.5 million Africans, and you um, then begin to see most people really don't understand the Atlantic trade slave. And so because of this history, and it's always written through the lens of power and not the lens of the people who were exploited, the truth can sometimes get watered down. And it ends up in sound bites on talk shows like this. So what most people took from the conversation was that Africans sold slaves. So I want to take each of her points one by one, and we're going to look at the history of Britain's role in the slave trade. Now, I want to begin by giving a little bit of a description about slavery. Um, slavery as a practice had been in existence since before Roman times. So slavery was something that was a part of most of the cultures throughout the world. And people were slaves for various reasons, like if they were captured during a war, if they were a criminal, or even if they owed a debt. So the practice had always been around when it came to people enslaving their own people. They would also conquer people in their own region and enslave them as well. So that's really how cultures began to grow all over the world. But not until Britain's expansion and colonization all around the world did slavery become a system of business, but most of all, began to target the African people. Britain accounted for 40% of the Africans sent to North America, and the Portuguese accounted for the other 30%. So not only in the actual country, but also as they expanded into North America and Spanish colonies, they supplied these colonies with slaves in order to work on sugar plantations, cotton plantations, and many of these people were really literally worked to death. So to say that Britain's entire empire, along with the U.S.'s, was completely built on the practice of slavery is not an exaggeration. And I think the healing can take place when we can admit the truth of what happened and then move forward in knowing that truth. The scab keeps getting peeled off when we find out little by little who was complicit and what happened during that time. Slavery was a big part of the British economy. It built the British economy. Number one, they produced the goods that the British Empire traded with other countries. Number two, it provided the physical infrastructure that revered architects built upon. So the physical infrastructure, meaning buildings, streets, plumbing, all of it, urban planning, concrete, all of it, they built the city literally with their hands. But then also they provided the human infrastructure, the human capital that it took to build these things. Number three, they maintained entire households so that the British royalty and slave owners in general could mine their fortunes. So it is not unusual for generations later 
for people later after after all this is said and done to look back and say, how do you repay a people who worked an average of 3,000 hours of unpaid work annually for 400 years? Now, in Britain's first documented participation in the Atlantic slave trade was in 1550, when Sir John Hawkins of Plymouth who was said to be the pioneer of the English slave trade, formed a syndicate with other merchants, and they were hijacking Portuguese slave ships. Now, the Muslims and the Portuguese had, all, had long been involved with the slave trade, um, and so Sir Hawkins saw this and he took advantage of it. Records indicate he sold 1,500 slaves from 1560 to 1568, and the only thing that stopped him was that he lost the battle to the Spanish and he lost five ships. Britain continued to dirty its hands in the slave trade when, in 1660, Charles II turned it up a bit and he gave it structure. He established a company called the Royal African Company, whose sole purpose was to transport Africans from West Africa to the different colonies, in the Spanish colonies, as well as in North America. And then some they brought back to Britain to actually be slaves there in Britain. By 1699, London had become a major trading port for slaves, mounting 12,100 slave voyages. So between 1662 and 1807, British and British colonies purchased 3.5 million Africans, and 2.9 million of them ended up in North America. So when Britain tries to wash his hand and say, well, you know, we, we were the champions of abolition, it's like throwing a rock and then hide your hand. You were complicit, you trafficked over 3 million slaves, and to not be truthful about it, um, and for historians and commentators, um, to take a, a defensive stance about it, it makes it appear to be um, insensitive around the subject and insensitive to the people who went through this ordeal. Now, I want to give the definitions of reparations because she used a um, some terms and some things, and I want to make sure we're all clear um, as we open up the discussion and talk about the three points, I'm going to give my three answers. Y'all are going to leave your comments and we're going to keep the conversation going because this really is the only way that we can lead to healing and not insulting and hurting one another. According to Miriam Webster's online dictionary, a reparation is the making of amends for a wrong one has done by paying money to or otherwise helping those who have been wrong. So that's the definition of reparations. And that's what she and Don Lemon were talking about. So her first point was, she said that when you are considering reparations, go back to the beginning of the trade route. The African chiefs were trading slaves with the Portuguese, with the British, and with the Muslims, and so many more in order to sell slaves. So, is that a fact? Yes, indeed. African chiefs were selling their people. And it's maddening and it's hurtful. These people did not ask to be sold, and nor did they get their permission. But it does not give the Britons a pass in accepting their responsibility for their role in the slave practice. Britain was expanding. They needed cheap labor and they needed a lot of it. They recognized on the continent of Africa that there was division. So by using the division that was already there and when an African uh, chief would not sell to them and would not perform slave raids, they would empower their neighboring tribe with guns, with weapons, whatever they needed to overthrow the one who didn't want to operate in the slave trade. So her pivot to blame the African chiefs, blame the African people for their own annihilation um, is short-sighted because it took two. There was a conspiracy and those two who collaborated in the conspiracy both benefited from it. 
So if you're going to blame the African slaves, you too have to take responsibility as well. Number two, she pointed to Britain had ended slavery 32 years before the U.S. did. And I want to look at Britain's, and I want to use quotation of air quotations here, Britain's abolition of slavery. And why I don't see when you talk about reparations, why she has a problem with it. Because in 1807, Britain outlawed the slave trade as far as the trans transport of them. But the slave practice itself, it continued in the British colonies until 1833, when it was completely abolished. Freeing 800,000 people. Now, though Britain had freed the slaves, they put a few things in place where the people truly were not free. Because even though they were legally free, former slaves still had to provide 45 hours of unpaid labor to their former masters for four years. I don't, I don't think she probably included that in that conversation that they were having. And that's what I'm saying about being truthful about really what happens. The second thing that they did under this freeing the slave um, mantra was that they formed the Slave Compensation Commission. Now, at first hearing, you're probably like, yes, the Slave Compensation Committee, that means they put money aside to compensate those who had lived through slavery. But you would be wrong. The Slave Compensation Commission was formed to pay reparations to slave owners who had been financially harmed from the abolition of slavery. The British government paid 46,000 slave owners a whopping $17 billion in today's standards. So this morality about ending slavery and not paying reparations are just canaries in the coal mine. The fact of the matter is they gave 46,000 slave owners reparations and gave the slaves nothing. Lastly, she said perhaps the 2,000 men who were a part of the West African Prevention Squadron, which was formed by the Royal Navy to patrol the Atlantic Ocean after um, the slave trade in, had been abolished in 1833. So it began in 1807, but then in 1833, they abolished it, slavery in all of the colonies, and they put this in place in order to patrol the waters. My response to this one is pretty simple. It's first and foremost, a lot of the men who passed away and who fought, so a lot of those 2,000 men were black. The British Royal Navy often used Africans um, in their ranks. And so a lot of those men were black. Secondly, I would hope that the men who served in that Navy, in that, in that squadron did so because they were mortified and horrified by the 400 years of slavery that their country had participated in and the millions of life that had been lost on the sea as a result of it. So if you want to know more about Britain's involvement in the slave trade, more and more is being discovered every day. Uh, there's a professor, Catherine Holland, and the Dr. Nick Draper, who has been doing more detailed studies on this. So I just had to come and make a video as an answer to some of those points that Ms. Fordwick brought out during her and Don Lemon's discussion because a lot of those points that she was making were covered up by some of the facts of what the ugly truth was about Britain's hand in this. Now, what I will say is that it's true. They did end it 32 years before America, but the remnants in the legacy had already been set because the people who colonized America brought this practice with them. And these are people who were from Britain. And when they got there, the Portuguese were already there. The Dutch was up in New York. So they were slave trading as well. So 
the slave trade was a universal and global phenomenon that people from every country during that time participated in. But it was the exploitation of the black Africans that truly made this story and Britain's involvement especially odious. So more discussion needs to be had. As I mentioned, other countries who participated in the slave trade, we've covered Britain and Britain. I do want to say that they, once they began to really move out of the slave trade, so they did have those rules, but after those rules were eliminated, they did become leaders in trying to stop the slave trade. But of course, like I said earlier, they had benefited greatly from it. I'm really glad we're getting to have this conversation without anger and animosity. Facts are facts, history is history, and the sooner that we can deal with it and have the conversation around it, the sooner we can heal from it. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to press like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you on another great episode of Royal Black and Elite.